Welcome to Leader Logic. I'm Amelia and today I wanted to go through a safety moment um, and I've just picked spiders as an example because it's one that we talk about a lot here in Australia and I wanted to um, use one of the supercharging techniques that I linked to in or that I discussed in my previous video um, about how to make the discussion more relevant to designers. So here we go and the first slide uh, just shows an example of all the different spiders that there are in Australia. I mean there's so many that National Geographic has come out with a poster of them um, and then around the outside of the slide I've actually added a few um, particular examples so I can't remember all of the names but um, basically the ones on the vertical axis are the ones that are really dangerous and the ones on the bottom are the ones that will give you a nasty bite but won't necessarily um, put you in hospital. Um, no one's actually died recently from a spider bite, but they can be quite painful. Um, you know, the one that we uh, often talk about is the redback spider, which is the one on the centre um, right hand side. Um, so, yep, spiders are horrifying. They love hiding in nooks and crannies. They love hiding in, um, you know, uh, things that you've got leaned up against walls. Um, and often the safety moments that we have are all about how to prevent um, being bitten. So a lot of the things that come up commonly are being careful, keeping an eye out, wearing gloves when you're handling equipment, making sure that you can see where you're putting your hands so don't reach anywhere um, blindly like under a ledge. Um, check under toilet seats because sometimes you'll get a huntsman sitting underneath the, uh, the toilet seat. I mean, there are a lot of things that come up on construction sites really regularly, but for designers, um, that's not necessarily uh, the most relevant thing to be talking about. I think sometimes it's better to talk about how you might prevent spiders um, accumulating around or congregating around the buildings that you're designing. So um, first of all, I've gone through a few of the places that they hide and, you know, we'll whip through those pretty quickly. So trees and leaf litter, uh, gaps in windows and gaps around doors. Basically, they can crawl through the tiny gaps and get into the buildings if you're designing a building or a storage shed or something like that. Um, they also accumulate around lights, usually because they're trying to um, build webs in areas where lots of moths are flying so that they can um, eat the moths. Um, they also go up in high corners for the same reason um, and basically anywhere where bugs are congregating. Uh, they also like hiding behind anything that's stuck to a wall or stacked up against a wall. So when I say stuck to a wall, I'm thinking things like um, air conditioning units, um, pipelines that are, you know, um, like down pipes that are going against a wall. So those are just the types of places where you'll genuinely find them. Um, and then also, you know, behind stockpiles, behind things that are on shelves. Um, any stuff that you put down, you set and forget, they'll tend to um, find safe habitat in. So this is the meat of it, which is really how you can design to prevent spiders uh, finding your design attractive. So the first suggestion is to do with the trees and the shrubs and the uh, leaf litter that we talked about in the previous slide. Um, trees are more relevant to the spiders that live in webs and leaf litter is more relevant to crawling spiders. But in both cases, this first recommendation is really to look at ways that you can separate those trees, um, mulch, leaf litter, anything that's going to be collecting and providing a safe habitat for spiders, how to keep that a reasonable distance away from the building so that you're kind of creating a no man's land where um, a crawling spider would have to be very exposed and out in the open to go from that safe zone to the building that you're designing. Um, and that's even before he manages to find a way into the building. Um, and for tree spiders, um, so webbing spiders, having that distance between the tree and the building makes it a longer distance for their web to span. So they're less likely to be able to either build or maintain a web in that area. Um, and the reason why the, the webbing spiders are important to reduce is because um, otherwise you're just creating 
a, an operational or a cleaning cost to remove those webs. If you can prevent the webs from going up in the first place, then you don't have to clean them on an ongoing basis. Okay, so the next one is to specify vermin proofing in your design. So for spiders, we're talking about a fine mesh like a fly screen on the window, if that's appropriate. Now, encouraging predators, um, you might think, well, how can a designer actually encourage predators for spiders? Well, what you can do is when you're scoping up a project, you can talk to um, you know, environmental um, scientists or ecologists and figure out what you can do in the surrounding landscape to attract predators. Um, so for example, in the case of spiders, birds eat a lot of spiders. And so what you could do is put um, nesting boxes for local bird species in the area so that they're attracted to the area and therefore more likely to encounter the spiders that you're trying to avoid. And the second one was to encourage competitors. So um, I've got a few examples here. So um, apparently uh, ladybugs are quite good competitors for some spider species because um, ladybugs are actually carnivorous and eat little aphids. Um, and then I've put some geckos there as well because um, geckos, particularly in Australia, like to eat the moths that accumulate around lights. And so if you're having a problem with spiders because you're getting a lot of moths accumulating, um, encouraging geckos to the area um, might actually be a way of controlling the moth numbers and therefore keeping the, um, the, the spider population down. So in that case, we're kind of hoping that the geckos will outcompete the spiders. Now, how you actually create a gecko friendly environment, not entirely sure. It could be as simple as telling people not to kill the geckos, but there you go. Some ideas to think about on how to prevent spiders. Um, I've got a few more here. So one is to um, prevent the accumulation of equipment outside in areas where spiders can um, find shelter, actually bring the equipment inside and um, put it in a very orderly fashion where it's just not creating that, um, that safe space. So again, from a designer's perspective, your responsibility would be to actually identify roughly how much equipment needs to be stored and making sure that if you're designing storage, you're designing enough area to house all of that equipment. The next one is to automate outdoor lights. So this is touching on the um, idea of lights attracting moths and the moths being a food source for the spider. What you could do is um, look at whether you really need the, night, the lights on um, as much as um, they are at other places where you have these types of problems. So do they need to be on all night or do they just need to come on when someone's in the area? So would would a motion sensor significantly reduce the amount of moths in the area because the lights are only on for 10 minutes. So in that space of time, it doesn't really attract that many moths. Now, the other related idea is to look at whether the bulbs that you're using could be changed out with something that's less attractive to moths. Now, I am by no means a lighting designer, but it looks like there are some products out there um, that create a yellower light and that attracts fewer moths than um, a bright white light. So again, things to look into, things to talk to the relevant experts about, but they'll all um, cut down either the food source for spiders or the hiding places for spiders so that uh, they're not such a problem in your future designs. That's it for this episode. Comment if you think I've missed anything. Um, and also I'd be interested to hear if you'd like to hear thoughts on any other um, safety moment and how that might apply to designers. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, you know the drill. Uh, look forward to talking to you next time. Mm -hmm.